I saw a video and it was of Malu. Maybe she was 10 years old, nine years old in that video. She looked extremely young and she's wearing a bikini and she was just dancing. At first, it's a harmless video, but knowing what I know that there's so many creeps out there, personally, I would not post that, but this is where it gets bad. So I went to the comments just to see because I just kind of knew what the comments would look like, but I just wanted to confirm it with my own eyes. And the very first comment I see is a very disturbing comment. So this weirdo commented a heart emoji and they commented three water emojis. So I click on their page and what do I see? A grown man, well into his 40s, maybe 50s, wearing a little girl's bikini and they posted it. Sites that like, you can also sign up to um, get be somebody that, that like a recruiter and they will give either give you a certain amount of money or they will take a certain amount of money off what you pay the site a month and so that's what these people are doing all these people that say link in bio if you want to find out how to sell feet pics these people are recruiters well 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 Okay, so today's episode is on social media and the entertainment industry and whether they are pushing a prostitution child sex agenda. Let's go and discover more. That is important to, I like to start these videos in fact, with little anecdotes, little moments that inspired them, that brought this to life. And it was these series of tweets. That inspired me and entered me into this rabbit hole where I lost my mind. And forgive me, guys, I'm probably going to go here and there, but there's a central point to this. And it is that the entertainment industry and social media to a certain degree, TikTok, Instagram, are complicit or implicit in a child sex prostitution agenda ring. Anyway, you get where I'm going with this. Essentially they are somewhat involved in this practice. So you see the series of tweets and it made me think, and the first place where my brain went was the Balenciaga saga. And do you remember the Balenciaga saga where- Balenciaga? The same Balenciaga tied to Satan worshiping Insta photos and child pornography court documents? And weren't they recently involved in a scandal sexualizing kids in their ads? Controversial recent ad campaign featured kids- With a bear in a bondage outfit. Okay, you guys, so what's going on at the luxury fashion brand Balenciaga? At first I thought, okay, fashion is meant to be edgy. Maybe I just don't get it. I wanted to understand what all the fuss was about. Was Balenciaga trolling with an extreme PR stunt to raise brand awareness that turned into a scandal? Is this a company simply pushing the limits of taste and accidentally going too far? Or did we just catch them in the act? Because why choose this imagery? Why advertise with a cocktail of extreme sex, Satanism, and children? I think the thing that makes me most uncomfortable and is leaves me the most disturbed about these Balenciaga saga in this instant is that it came up, exploded in social media and disappeared. Now I'm uncomfortable with that. People like Wiley, people like Kanye West are very clearly and very vehemently dismissed, removed, cancelled from social media. However, Balenciaga have been able to slide under the radar. And as you can tell from this clip. Enter Demna Vasalia, the brand's creative director since 2015. Interestingly, Demna got his feet wet in 2014 when he created Vediments. The streetwear collection is wildly popular with celebrities, including Rihanna, Hailey Bieber, and Selena Gomez. The phrase sexual fantasies and drink from me and live forever is splattered across his apparel, and his oversized bomber jacket proclaims total fucking darkness over the symbol of a pentagram. He's this guy who's photographed in that full black mask alongside Kim Kardashian at the Met Gala. More on Kim later. But those full black masks are styled like what might be worn by a BDSM gimp, the sexually submissive partner. And you don't have to go far to see these all over Balenciaga. The brand spring 2023 fashion show in New York City is teeming with gimp masks and fetish bodysuits, model after model. And we can't skip Lada Volkova. 
Volkova is a Russian-born fashion consultant who styled Demna's Vediments collection and worked with him on Balenciaga up until at least 2017. She's close to Demna and has ties to everyone in fashion, from Vogue to Adidas to Chanel. Vogue and W Magazine dubbed her, quote, the coolest stylist in the industry, and photographed her wearing a BDSM collar she bought at a sex shop. Wormholing through Lada's social media post, it's riddled with satanic imagery, children in distress, and murder scenes. Lada's also friends with Gosha Rubachinsky, a Russian streetwear designer who allegedly pressured a 16-year-old boy to send nudes of himself. The trio seems to be a tight-knit group, with Demna telling ID Magazine back in 2016, someone wrote that Lada, Gosha, and I grew up on child pornography and radiation from Chernobyl, which is why we're so fucked up. Balenciaga has significant celebrity pool. All kinds of famous faces love Balenciaga, and none of them appear to be cutting ties with the brand. Beyonce, Kylie Jenner, Emily Rajakowski, Gwyneth Paltrow, Nicole Kidman, Dua Lipa, Salma Hayek, Bella and Gigi Hadid, Kanye, the list goes on and on. Nobody has been fired, and none of the celebrities are speaking out. People who are affiliated to them, the Kardashians specifically, and unfortunately guys, the Kardashians do come up quite a lot. And it, I didn't actually go into this video planning to attack the Kardashians, not at all. However, they just seem to appear and come up a worryingly a level amount. That being said, like I said, social media, it seemed to vanish. It seemed to be no big media outcry about what happened with Balenciaga. And as you can tell from some other clips I've dug up. Remember she wore that ridiculous all black outfit with the gimp reminiscent face mask? The mother of four even paraded her nine-year-old daughter North around New York wearing an even more dramatic kid's face mask. She says she's, quote, reevaluating her working relationship with Balenciaga and was distressed by the images. But she also has spoken with the brand and believes they will do better going forward. So what will happen in the future? Balenciaga itself have not been reprimanded and they seem to make these uncomfortable jokes and innuendos about their nonsensical, crazy behavior regarding child pornography. And it just left me a little bit more uncomfortable, but you're probably thinking that's Balenciaga. And maybe some people in business, they don't wanna affect their business ties. People work with people they dislike all the time. I know I have, I know you have, it's not unusual. So does that really give enough merit to this big title that you've put on? Not necessarily, however, dug up a little bit more. Now, are you familiar with the term yachting? Yacht girls? Now, I, I went into another rabbit hole when it came to this and I was like, whoa, check this out. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, it's a practice when extremely wealthy people pay girls to spend time with them on yachts and the girls are often referred to as yacht girls. And it's not just models doing this, even Kylie and Kim have done it. And at some point it was rumored that even Meghan Markle had also done it, which we'll discuss later. And the list just keeps going. Even though these people are already pretty rich, their wealth is nothing compared to wealthy clients who hire them. Usually these girls are often recruited by their co-stars or other yacht girls to party and hang around the super wealthy and powerful people in return for luxurious gifts and cash. But an unwritten rule is that they need to have sex or carry out certain favors for those rich and powerful people and their guests. This helps them make up to $40,000 or upwards of six to seven figures just for one night. Like when Kylie Jenner yachted after her 18th birthday. In 2015, right when Kylie Jenner turned, turned 18, she was the highest paid yachter in 2015. And the bids went for five million dollars for a night, which is insane. Like that's insane. I think one thing that made me very uncomfortable was the Kylie being eighteen and her being the highest bidder or highest bidded yacht girl at that time made me uncomfortable because again, her age and her being eighteen, her being fresh made me uncomfortable. And why was that public knowledge? Has she been a yacht girl when she was younger? It, it left me uncomfortable. And there was other instances of underage women being with these rich billionaires. Emily Ratajkowski talked about these things in her book, where she recalls the time she was paid $25,000 to attend the Super Bowl with Joe Lowe. Joe Lowe's the same guy who was accused of siphoning 4.5 billion US dollars from Malaysia's 1MDB sovereign wealth fund. Kim Kardashian also was associated with Joe Lowe. And an investigative journalist looked into this and said the line between prostitution 
One true thing about yachting which cannot be argued is that it does promise you connections. Many B and C list actors also take part in yachting, as said by a veteran of the film industry. The line between professional prostitutes and B or C list Hollywood actresses and models who accept payment for sex with rich older men is sometimes very blurred. This is what Ellie Nahas, who ran a Beirut based modeling agency before being arrested on charges of running a prostitution ring in 2007, had to say about yachting happening during Cannes. These are actresses who made bad career choices and fell off the radar. They tell themselves what they're doing at Cannes is okay, that they're just on dates with rich men, when the reality is they're doing what prostitutes do. The line between prostitution and Hollywood actresses is very thin, especially on these yacht boats, and it seems to be a rite of passage, a standard entry. And as you can tell from this clip, I like to think that I was different from women like her, but over time it became harder to hold on to that distinction or even believe in its virtue. I watched models and actresses guarantee themselves financial success and careers by dating or marrying rich and famous men. She also opened up about how yachting and all couldn't be avoided. I couldn't help but wonder whether those women were actually the smart ones, playing the game correctly. It was undeniable that there was no way to avoid the game completely. We all had to make money one way or another. And again, the reason I bring this up is because it's something to do with Hollywood, the business of entertainment. And things like this pop up on social media all the time. And you don't get top of the algorithm, guys. I know for a fact, yeah, this kind of videos, they don't hit the top of the algorithm. They may do if I put TikTok or something like that in it, but they don't hit the top of the algorithm. And it leaves me a little bit uncomfortable. Are we, the social media and the entertainment industry, somewhat complicit in these behaviors, especially if you have to do deals with these people? And I think this brought me to my biggest point, and it's how young and impressionable people are affected by this. There's something called the adification, I believe, or adification bit here, of young women specifically. It is a term more specific for young black girls who are forced to grow up very quick, i.e. the story of Precious, forced to take mother roles before their time, forced to take parental roles before their time. <clears throat> However, the adification of kids, sorry if I mispronounced that again, but adification of kids is very prominent on TikTok. You can see this with the pushing of Jodie Woods and Alabama Baker. Again, they have uncomfortable ties with the Kardashians. Now, I'm going to bring this up and I have to say the first kid that was extremely adulficated was... Kylie Jenner. And that promotion into adulthood should come around the age of 18 when people are legally an adult. But for Kylie, it was obviously introduced at a younger age and I see how it's kind of mimicked in a lot of modern teenagers. We all know the story about how Kylie Jenner used her insecurity of her small lips, got lip filler, essentially tricked the world into believing her enhancements were due to lip products such as lip liner, lipstick, lip gloss, lip stain, all of these different things. And other teenage white girls in particular who met mesmerized her at the time, fell for the okie doke and bought into it. Glitz and glam started prematurely, but because it ended with a glamorous end result, essentially it was a win for the Kardashians. And I also feel like society at the moment was brushing over the reality of what we were seeing. A 15, 16, 17 year old girl with body enhancements with such a casual approach to it as if she had been indoctrinated to believe that she needed all of these things. It wasn't until the last few years where these conversations have been a lot more transparent where we realize why the hell did this ever slide in the first place? What mother subjects their teenage daughter to surgical enhancements? And why is there an expectation for teenage girls to be viewed as adults? And it worked back then, and I think it actually still works now. Call out culture is very heavy, so we talk about everything these days, but that doesn't mean that people still aren't doing decades old practices of all of these different phenomenons. And the adultification of teenage girls, and in this case specifically celebrity kids, is still heavily impacted. And as you can tell, there seems to be a fascination with kids and them appearing older. And Kylie, from a very young age, was made to appear older, was made to do or encouraged to have plastic surgery done on her face before she had actually fully reached womanhood, before she had fully grown up and fully developed. And that is a worrying thing and a worrying trend. And if you look at the people in these comments, as you can see from the first clip as well, before the video started, that it is young and impressionable people that are left in these videos and it worries us all. And in the case of Jody and Alabama Baker, so Jody is, um, let me just say this now, Jody is 
Jordan Woods' sister, little sister who is 16. And tell me if you think she's 16. Who would win in a twerk off? Me. Yeah? Jordan. Jordan got that thing on her. <laughs> she does that wagon on. <laughs> no, not the wagon. Again, I don't know. I have no problem with her exploring makeup, exploring her womanhood, but it seems like she's doing this for the adult lens and these platforms don't seem to be safe. Alabama Baker as well. I have a little bit more of a problem with her. She's a little bit more problematic. She seems to blackify herself, Alabama. Again, Travis Baker, now with Courtney. Worrying. They seem to be the new two It Girls on the rise. Clearly ties with Chris. Well, clear ties with the Kardashians, I should say. It does leave me worried and concerned. I do feel for Jodie in this sense that Jodie's quite tall. She seems to be quite voluptuous for a young lady. Um, and it seems to be somewhat out of her control, the fact that she looks older. However, her makeup and the way she styles herself is for the adult lens. And I do worry about them generally. And again, I'm gonna bring this up and say that the person that inspires them, that being Kylie, herself was in a relationship with an older man before her time. Remember her in time? Kylie Jenner would first meet Tyga when she was 14 and he was 21. And three years later, media would begin circulating of them at Kylie's 17th birthday party, where a now 24-year-old Tyga hands her a bottle of tequila and tells her to take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. A couple of days after the party, Tyga would call off his engagement to Black China and would fail to show up at a club appearance at Greystone Manor in West Hollywood after the venue refused entry to underaged Kylie Jenner. This would result in rumors circulating that the two were dating. I think he, I think he got in early. I think he was smart. <laughs> <laughs> they closer in age than a lot of relationships that I know. You know, he's twenty five. She'll be eighteen in August. Like. Yeah, I, I, I knew Tiger was smart, you know? <laughs> on July 27th, 2015, Khloe Kardashian appeared on the cover of Complex Magazine. And in an interview for them, she said she thinks her 17-year-old sister Kylie dating a 25-year-old Tyga counts as a special case that people shouldn't judge. Kylie is not a normal 17-year-old. You're not gonna say, so what are you doing this weekend? And have her say, having a slumber party at my girlfriend's or going to prom. That's not what Kylie does. Kylie is taking business meetings and bought her first house. Or she's going on a private plane with Carl Lagerfeld to take a meeting. That's not even what people do in their 30s. It's a rare circumstance. So let's treat this as a special case. Now we can go down the long laundry list of denials and seemingly seemingly innocuous omissions of truth of what actually happened with what Kanye said, with what Chloe said, and it leaves you somewhat uncomfortable. It, not even somewhat, let me be f just frank here. It leaves me fucking uncomfortable. And to keep it real with you, I think that Hollywood has a very blurred line between adultifying adult young children because they are in the entertainment industry and they've been around them and they feel like they're more grown than they are and just qu quite frank child pedophilia um, I broke that down because my brain was going somewhere else but it just seems uncomfortable it just leaves me questioning them continuously continuously and that's how I entered this rabbit hole you could see from Balenciaga the first case that they have ties and have business relationships with these people again the Kardashians are there now you bring it forward the Tiger and Kylie adultifying Alabama and Jody, they're not going to be uncomfortable because some of the people they've been around are people who are involved in child pornography, child sex, prostitution. These things to them don't seem like problems. It only becomes problems, in my opinion, when it comes to the public light. That little quote Kim brought out regarding Balenciaga was weak, meek, and filled with PR. It I'm telling you guys this now, yeah? If you take anything from this video, they don't have the alarm bells that we have because they don't feel it. It's normified. It's like, if people came up to me and said, hey man, smoking weed is bad, I'd be like, yeah, it really is. But deep down, most of my friends do it. It does not bother me that entirely. Don't mean to dry snitch on you guys, sorry. But that's my whole point. And I know you're magnifying this to the umpth degree when it comes to child sex and pornography and especially prostitution. But you can tell they're not. They have normalized these behavior. These are people. They're the one percenters. They believe they are above 
the law. They don't answer to the same rules and regulations as us. We have given them the God complex. We treat them like they're better than any human being. Why would they follow laws, rules, relegations, sorry, rules, regulations, moralities that dictate to the normal man, normal man when traditionally they are above, higher, treated, made to feel above the normal man? I'll take this a step further. The people that mimic them a lot, the IG models of the world, the pseudo influencers of the world. You can see this with the IG models that promote their link tree, which typically has OnlyFans in it. And you just check out this clip and see what they say about OnlyFans. Regardless of the money, no, you shouldn't be on OnlyFans. But here's the thing, even if you do want to do it, perhaps for the money, the thing is, there's just likely not any money attached to OnlyFans, despite what the media might try to convince people of by only focusing on the small percentage of people who are actually successful on the site. And to explain what I mean, here's this article from EV Magazine titled, No, You Won't Get Rich Quick on OnlyFans, The Math Behind the Fool's Gold Rush. Because you see, quote, making about $2,500 a month on OnlyFans puts you in the top 1% of OnlyFans creators. And that might sound like a lot, but it adds up to about $15 an hour hour and that's all pre-tax. In other words, you could make the same amount working at Chipotle and OnlyFans doesn't even have guac. As you can tell from these OnlyFans, typically it's full of lies. It's not as much money as you what you would be made to believe. It reminds me, quite frankly, of a lot of what happens on road when the man then will tell you, oh, this guy's making this much and this guy's making this much, but secretly they're not making much anyway. And the people that are really making a lot are the 0.11% and people who may have had connections prior to that anyway. And they don't tell you about the risk, similar to OnlyFans. I can definitely agree with you. When I see women that do have OnlyFans and that are older and that are promoting it to younger women and stating that this is so great, you're making so much money so fast. Mm. The majority of women that are on OnlyFans are not making right. massive amounts of cash. Like the industry and I think, what is this, like 600 a month or yeah, something? Yeah, it's, it's for not like, a lot like unless, you, yeah. unless you already have a platform. I don't think that any of us should be promoting or saying, hey, you're freshly 18, you should hop on this. And there are women that do that and right. try to sign women up just to get a referral Absolutely. from them. And I can definitely agree that that's wrong. Oh, I wait, was there's a referral. Wait, there's a referral program through to it? To sign. No. Yes. No. I didn't know that. And I think that. that that's no. wrong. Are you fucking serious? Yes. No. And like you can see from that clip as well, they don't tell you about the risk. Also, they're not referring to you and telling you that the people who are saying, hey, I made this much and I made this much are secretly referrers as well, making money off you joining off them. I did OnlyFans and I am ashamed at the behavior I've done. I thought it was cool, but all these females that you guys look up to in the industry, the, the, the media pushes you, they're all miserable. My mental health since I've started this has just slowly like been on such a decline. Like, I feel a little bit dead inside. You see these OnlyFans creators and like in people's Instagram bios, they'll be advertising, I'm in the top 1%. And I'm like, so you're sucking and fucking for three grand? And no one tells you about the hardships, the realities, the difficulties of entering down sex work. Now, I'm not knocking no one who does sex work. I don't recommend it, but some people are left with no choice. I'm just saying there's a real reality where you'll be put in situations moments where you will be uncomfortable or vulnerable and forced to do things that you may or may not have been comfortable with prior. Now, I'm not going to discourage anyone, but I don't think it should be encouraged on platforms like TikTok, like Instagram, subtly with the IG models as well, by the way, especially with this Dubai culture where you go out there and a rich man poos on you. I don't know what you want to call that. I don't know what you want to say it is, but let's call it what it is. Let's not gloss it up. It is is sex work. It is prostitution. Call it what it is. Don't run from it. That way you know the reality in which that you are entering. No one tells you with the mental scars. They tell you they got pooed on for 30k and they've got the Birkin bag. I don't know if Birkin bags are 30k. I doubt it. However, there's a real genuine reality that these things, these sex works that they enter in, it leaves them broken. Mental scars, lacking self-worth. Check out this. So he asked them about their investments and how they plan on maintaining their lavish lifestyles they've built up with this OnlyFans money. 
These women had previously in this podcast talked about getting some expensive apartments and luxury vehicles as soon as they started making a decent income every month. This is a big mistake a lot of people make when they're getting quote unquote fast money. Think about athletes and how some of them go broke after making hundreds of millions in their career. Hell, I just saw an interview with Jose Canseco who said the summer after he retired after earning 55 million in his career, he was living in a friend's garage. And I say, and I left that video there, not to discourage you if you're really, really desperate for it. Just to show you the reality, again, it's similar to road. When you're doing up road and you're, people think you can make money quick, no one tells you about the snakiness, the hardship, losing workers, losing money, having to re-up, having to rebuild your line, have to take your line to, for yourself, have some friends robbing you, friends lying to you. No one tells you about these hardships. And similar to OnlyFans, no one tells you about the mental scars that go on. I'm not here to discourage people or things. I'm here to show you the reality of these things and not gloss over them and pretend as if they don't exist. And these IG models that, let's call it what it is, if they are going to Dubai, if they're selling sex to rich people, what is that and the, what's the difference between that and prostitution? You tell me because I can't work it out. Don't let them fool you into thinking that this is some easy, glamorous life because of what we see on social media. Like you can see and like we can always tell, social media is a gloss. It is a highlight reel. It is a moment in time in which you see the reality, you see pictures of what happened in people's life. You never catch the real reality. You never catch the hardships. Please do not fall for that. And I'll give, I'll leave you with this story. Remember this girl. Bad Barbie. She talked about her experience on OnlyFans. And generally, she's been exploited by the industry. She's been exploited by social media. And that's what really triggered the title as well. Her story, her moment. She has talked about just six days after Danielle's 18th birthday back in 2020 or 2021, she started an OnlyFans. In the first six hours, she was able to make one million dollars. Danielle waited until she was 18 because you have to be an adult to make an OnlyFans account. And in her first year of OnlyFans, she made 50 million dollars. That's so much money. And the fact that so much people paid for that, that's just disgusting. Like, y'all. And maybe a year after or two years after, Danielle actually said that her immediate fame on OnlyFans disturbed her because she was really young. And as you can see from there, the scars, the trauma, the pain that she herself has gone through due to this. And some of it's to do with her upbringing. And again, with Alabama and Jody and Danielle, well, sorry, Danielle is her first name, but Bad Barbie. I do question the parents. I question the morality of parents. I question... Chris Kardashian in all of this because her name is always around. It was Kylie, as you can see from other clips. Kim was a yacht girl. She seems to have no problem with giving out her children to sell sex for wealth. Hey, hey. However, like I was saying, the trauma is the pain. You see the highlights, you see the glossy bits. You don't see the deadness in the eyes. You don't see the pain. You don't see the numbness. You don't see the lack of emotion. That, is, that they are left with. And I think as a society, we need to change things. We need to call these things out. Balenciaga is running free and is doing great as ever, even though they have serious and deep ties to pedophilia, BDSM with children. No, no one has called them out, but yet yeah, we were happy to cancel Kanye, cancel Wiley. I remember, I'll tell you this little anecdote before I go. I was doing a podcast, almost a conversation. Go check it out. It's not too bad. Go vote for Jules as well. He's uh, up for video of the year on the MOBOs. And they told me specifically in that, when I was doing that podcast, do not mention Wiley. Do not mention him. He's insulted the Jewish community. Hey, no one's got no problem with the Jewish community here. But do not mention him. Do not say anything about this guy. Don't mention him. Balenciaga do this. They have clearest ties to child pornography, child sex, child abuse. And they, they're still here. They're good. Couple retractions and we move. But Wiley was shut out. That doesn't tell you things, guys. I don't know what will. So to conclude, guys, the title of this was Is Social Media and the Entertainment Industry Hollywood Pushing child pornography and prostitution. Maybe it's implicitly, maybe it's implicitly. 
Who's to know whether they are enabling it or allowing it? But I know when the relationship is that close to each other, a wise man once said, and a wise man was Shannon Sharp, you either enable bad behavior or you're allowing bad, bad behavior. I'll leave you to decide. You've seen the clips. You can explore them. I'll put the links into my description so you can explore further if you're more interested in the Balenciaga or the Kardashian side of the story. They are very d interesting and detailed anecdotes into these different ones. I tried to compile them together. But I'll leave you to think about that. And I'll leave you to think about how our role is as consumers is in that. Do we have a duty of care? to consume their products less and create our own platforms? Or is it none of our business and when we see it, we call it out, but if we don't see it, we ignore it? I'll leave it to you. I have my own opinion and I believe if you can see a trend, you call it out and you stomp it out as much as possible and you have your foot on their neck. But some people may disagree. Some people don't like confronting genuine problems, genuine issues when placed in front of them, they rather look around it. It's that mess. What odd analogies to end with? Well, guys, thank you for coming on the show. I enjoyed you being here. I enjoy talking to you. It's Christmas. I probably wouldn't see you till after Christmas. Merry Crimbo. Many, many happy returns and blessings in them things there, yeah? Enjoy the time off. Enjoy, even if you don't have any time off, Enjoy the little pockets that you get to enjoy the people you're around. Christmas is about one thing, in my opinion, and that's family, enjoying the people around you and loving that and all that. You get me? Peace. We got to protect our youth. We got to protect our kids and our goddaughters and our nephews and our nieces and our cousins from weird ass freak motherfuckers like this. You feel me? Huh?